All right, in this video we're looking at truth tables and their application to digital electronics. So I thought we'll start with an electronic circuit, okay, one that we're all familiar with. Oop. Switch, a light, and a DC power supply. Now if we have a look at switch S1 and the lamp, we straight away know from electronics that if the switch is closed the lamp will turn on. Right? Nothing uh, genius about that. But there's a way that we can describe this operation using what's known as a truth table. So we can describe every possibility of the input switch versus the corresponding output, the lamp. Now, following on from our, our previous lecture on number systems, we're going to use binary. Right? So every combination of the switch, the switch can be on or off, can't be half on or half off because it doesn't function that way. It can be on or off, so binary is, is a natural choice to use, being either 0 or 1. So this is the switch off, and this is the switch on. And then the corresponding outputs, if the switch is off, the lamp is off, if the switch is on, the lamp is on. Right? So this is what was known as a truth table. All right? It's a table that tells you under which logical conditions the output will be high. That's normally how we're using it. Let's try a more interesting example. All right, so as before, we're going to have the DC power supply. But this time we're going to have two switches, and they're going to be in parallel with our lamp as before. So we've got switch S1 and switch S2. Now once again, no, uh, no amount of rocket science here for us as electronics engineers. All right, except when we do our truth table, we now have an extra column. And then using binary, once again, we can write down all the possibilities of these switches being open and closed. All right, so it's easy for us to articulate given that there's only two switches. S1 open, S2 open, S1 closed, S2 uh, open, S1 open, S2 closed, or both closed. Another way of saying that would be both off or both open. Switch 1 close, switch 2 open. Switch 2 close, switch 1 open, or both closed. Now I want you to have a look at something that's interesting that has happened with this particular combination. Right? While I could have written these rows in any particular order, all right, doesn't matter if I'd reversed it or intermingled it, all right, these rows of inputs must cover every input combination that is possible. In other words, the truth table only works if it says for every possible combination of inputs, does it tell you what the output's going to be. It does not work if you only do some of them. Now, an easy way to work out how many rows you're going to require, so the number of rows in the truth table equals 2, because we're in binary, base 2, to the power of the number of inputs. All right, so in this case, two inputs, two to the power of two, equals four rows, which is what we've got. And if you look at these numbers, if we were to actually then convert them back to decimal, zero, one, two, three. So the easiest way to be able to fill in the truth table for the inputs um, is to count in binary. Oop. 
that will ensure that you meet every single possible input combination. And then filling this one in, obviously not too difficult, if either switch is on or they're both on, um, the lamp is on. If they're both off, the lamp is off. Right, so let's try another one. This time we've got three switches, our lamp, our DC supply, two to the power of three inputs equals eight rows. So not only do we have an extra column now because of that extra input, and note I normally have the highest numbered input on the left hand side, just like we have the most significant bit. Now, at this point you may find it easy to count in binary, or we can use what we call in the class Martin's method, which is, if you just look at the pattern, 01010101 for 8 rows, next one 00110011, the next one 00001111. So 1 0 1 1, 2 0 is 2 1s, 4 0 is 4 1s, 8 0 is 8 1s, 16 0 is 16 1s, and so forth. Alright, so that's a nice and easy method to be able to enter in uh, these truth tables without actually having to think of it in binary. But, as before, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. We still effectively count it in binary. This one's an easy circuit, right? only if all three switches are on, so this row here, does the lamp go on? For all other combinations, it is equal to zero. Right, so you can see how the truth table gives you a graphical uh, description of what, under what conditions will the output go high or low. Okay, under what input conditions will the output change? Right, and quite often we're interested primarily in where does it go equal to 1. That's where we're most interested in. Now, truth tables don't only work for circuits with one output. Right, there's nothing stopping you having multiple outputs. So, another electrical analogy, we've got S1, S2, S3, L1 for lamp 1, and L2 for lamp 2. Right, and in this case, not only do we have rows for each of the inputs, S1, S2, S3, but we'll also have rows well, sorry, columns for each of the inputs, we'll also have now an extra column for the extra output. Right, so that part doesn't change, we just keep adding columns as required. In this case we've got three inputs, so 2 to the power of 3 equals 8 rows, just as we've seen before, and we'll use Martin's method, just make sure that they line up as you fill in this information. Okay, so straight away we know if S1 is on, then, then is it only possible for L1 and L2 to switch on. Alright, so in all the cases where S1 is off, and this, so this row, this row, this row, and this row, it's not possible for the lamp to be on. Alright, so if S1 is on, S2 or S3 has to be on, so that one is eliminated. Okay, S1 and S2, L1 will be on, L2 will be off. S1 and S3, L2 will be on, L1 will be off. And all on, all lamps are on. Alright, so and that would be how we'd fill in a truth table that had multiple outputs.